Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Today we're going to talk about Gauss's Law. Gauss's Law is a great way to determine electric fields of rather complicated uh, pictures and Gauss's Law relies on some of the symmetry in the problem to help us understand. So let's say we do the following. Let's say we have a point charge and we'll say it's a positive point charge and now we want to figure out what the electric field looks like around this point charge. Well, you already know the answer, right? It sort of points everywhere away from the point charge and it gets weaker as you go out. And if we draw it with this sort of picture, the arrows indicate the direction of the electric field, the density of the lines indicates the strength of the electric field, and as you go out further, the density of the lines goes down, the lines get further apart, and so the electric field gets weaker, which we already knew. Okay, how do we calculate the electric field around a point charge according to Gauss's law? And Gauss's law says something very interesting. Gauss's law says that the flux is proportional to the enclosed charge. Okay, this is Gauss's law in words. Now, what does all this mean? Well, we need to understand what electric field flux means. That's what we mean here. This refers to electric field flux. Or you can think of it as the E field lines penetrating a surface. All right. When we say the E field lines penetrating a surface, we need to draw a surface, of course. And then what we're saying is it's proportional to the enclosed charge. Enclosed in what? Enclosed within that surface. Okay, so for a point charge, let's see if we can understand exactly what this means. What it means is the following. If I draw a closed surface around this thing, which would be a sphere, what we're saying is the flux, the number of E field lines coming out, has to be proportional to the enclosed charge. Okay. Let's see how that works here. So I've got one line that's popping out right there. I've got another there. And I've got another there, and so on. We're sort of trying to draw this in 3D as these things pop out of the closed surface. Okay, Charge inside, sending these electric field lines out. It's going to go through this spherical shell and it's going to pop out the other side. And so what is the flux in this case? The flux would be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in some appropriate units. Okay, so in this case we had a flux of 7. Namely, there are 7 lines of electric field coming out of our closed surface. But Gauss's law says that it's proportional to the enclosed charge. So in this case, we just had one charge in there. So if I add another charge in there, how does this work? Let's try a different color. Let's see if we can do blue. Let's say I add another positive charge right in the center. Okay, they're supposed to be on top of each other. In that case, that will also make electric field lines that are pointing radially outward and those electric field lines will also poke through the surface. So here they come. And now what's the total flux? Well the flux from the green was 7, the flux 
from the blue, it's also seven, right? One, two, oh, I forgot this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so the total now is, of course, 14. Now, again, this is just a number. There's no units ascribed to this right now. And in some sense, it doesn't really mean much physically because we are just talking about a graphical picture of this electric field. More charge in there means more electric field lines coming out, means more flux through the closed surface of our Gauss's law. Okay, what happens now if we change that positive charge, the blue one, to a negative charge? Let's take a look at that. So let's change this positive charge right there to a negative charge. So instead of another proton, maybe now it's an electron. And we still have our positive one sitting right there. How would this picture change? Well, if they're really right on top of each other, the only thing that's going to change is the arrowheads. Right? A negative charge has electric field lines coming towards it, not going out. So let's change all the arrowheads to the other direction. Okay, now all those field lines are going to be pointing in. Here they come into the surface. And now what do we say about the total flux? Well, flux is how many lines are going through the surface, but there's a direction to it. Greens are positive because they're going out of the surface, but the blues are now negative because they're coming into the surface. And so what's the total flux in this case? It's zero. Seven minus seven. Okay. But is that consistent with this? Flux is proportional to the enclosed charge. If there's zero flux, that means there must be zero enclosed charge. And that is, in fact, the case. We have a positive, but we have a negative. So the enclosed charge is, in fact, zero. And in some sense, it doesn't really make sense to draw any of these electric field lines because there would be no charge there. If the proton and the electron were really right on top of each other, there would be zero electric field around it. Okay, so this is sort of a brief introduction to Gauss's Law. In the next lecture, we're going to look at understanding this mathematically. Cheers.